Hello everyone and welcome to the Tank Club. Today this is going to be an update of my dungeon tank build for like optimised dungeon content. Uh, and this is for the Waken Flame patch. We've got quite a lot of updates for this build for this patch. So uh, we've got new gear, we've got new champion points, we've got a lot of new things going on. Uh, and quite a lot of new ways to set this up. Um, as always this build is for all classes. And the gear choices are somewhat... A choice of your own like you get to choose what sets are going to work best for you what sets are going to work best in your kind of group and you just make sure you are customizing this build to suit your own needs and the needs of your particular group so a few little things that I like to go with to start with attributes I kind of spread these out Four magicka 50 health 10 stamina I'm using bewitch sugar schools food that's going to give me all three stats and health recovery we've got the Atronach Munda stone I am an Imperial on this particular character, and that is for the max health, the max stamina, and the cost reduction of all abilities, including ultimate and block cost. So we're going to dive right into the gear choices. So for this patch, we've got some new sets that are going to be really, really nice to use. And as always, there's, there's kind of a few different gear sets that are very, very similar in how they work. So this build is very customizable because there's quite a few different gear sets that provide really good uptimes, really good group buffs, really good benefits to you as a tank as well. So one of the new sets coming in for this patch is Crimson Oath. Now, this is only going to be if you do dungeons with a stamina group. In the past, we didn't really use Alkosh for dungeon content and it wasn't advised to use Alkosh for dungeon content due to the lack of synergies available. And due to the difficulty of trying to proc it on um, a lot of spread out targets. Now, this problem has been resolved with the Wake and Flame patch. You've got this new gear set, uh, Crimson Oath. Uh, really nice set. It's a heavy armor set. It's basically a replacement for Alkosh, and it's available by farming it from a dungeon, which makes it very accessible to everybody. So for the two items, we get 1487 armor. We get three items with a 1206 max health. We get more armor, 1487 armor for the four piece. For the five piece, casting an ability, drinking a potion, or using a poison that applies a major or minor buff to yourself or an ally, sends out a wave of energy that reduces the armor of nearby enemies with within 12 meters by 3,541 for 15 seconds. This effect can occur once every 12 seconds and will only occur if an enemy is within range. So... In a stamina based group, you usually would be well under the pen cap in terms of four man content, um, and you'd have to make adjustments to setups based upon that. By using Crimson Oath as one of your gear sets, you'll be able to bridge that gap a little bit now with an extra 3,541 pen. So, this is going to be useful if you run in a dungeon group with stamina. If you don't run in a dungeon group with stamina, if you run with Magicka, this is going to be less effective. So, this is something you've got to kind of consider and think about. You've got to work this into your build if it's something that's going to work for your group. The next gear set is Drake's Rush. So the difference between sort of Drake's Rush and some of the other gear sets, Drake's Rush is actually a really, really good uh, group buff set. This is going to provide somewhere around 5% DPS increase, but this is only if you're in an organized group and they're dropping ultimates on cooldown. So if we look at this, two items... 1206 max health, three items, 1096 max stamina, and then the four items, 1096 max stamina. Again, really, really nice for your overall stats. When you bash an enemy, you and up to three group members within 15 meters of you can gain major heroism for 12 seconds, gaining three ultimate every one and a half seconds, and it can occur every 18 seconds. So if you're in a group and people are dropping ultimates on cooldown, this is going to be unbelievable. I personally really, really like this set. I use it for all four-man content. At the minute, I just find it to be absolutely excellent. It keeps a really good uptime of aggressive horn. It keeps really good uptimes during, like, it, just even ad pulls. People are able to drop their ults on ad pulls, kill all the ads faster with Destros, and then as we move on to boss fights, the ultimates are back again. And we've got four ultimates dropping at the start of every boss fight. It's just absolutely crazy good for that kind of situation. So Drake's Rush is another really, really good set. It's a one-bar set as well, which makes it good. Crimson is a one-bar set. Drake's Rush is a one-bar set as well. So you can 
really work these in a way where you can fit in more different gear options because you're able to one bar these particular gear sets. Now this is an optimized dungeon build but I am going to include leeching plate as an option for people that are trying to work on dungeon content for the first time. Maybe you don't have an organized group. Using one gear set to help you as an individual leeching plate would be the best one if you're not quite up to that higher standard let's say of tanking yet and you're still learning then you could use leeching plate as one of your gear sets i would always suggest however that you use leeching plate alongside a buff set so that it's not a full selfish build i think anybody that's trying to run a double selfish uh, gear setup is maybe kind of setting it up in a, in a kind of wrong way if you're going to use a gear set this one's going to help you probably the most i personally would never use it and you should try and remove this particular gear set as soon as physically possible because there are lots and lots of other ways to achieve healing and things like that. So if you must use it, then it is an option. Uh, but even things like the Master Sword and Board, that is a, a replacement for Leeching Plate. Using the Healing Monster set is a replacement for Leeching Plate. Using the Masters and a Healing Monster set is better than Leeching Plate. So really, really think about it because there are things that are way better than Leeching Plate um, that are available and will make your life easier without giving up too much in terms of group buffing. The next gear set is the Claw of Yolnokrin. This is my absolute favourite tank set in the game. However, for this particular patch now, I'm seeing less use for it in terms of form and content. And I'll show you my actual full setup in a second. But uh, this particular set, 1,206 max health. Um, minor Aegis, reducing incoming damage by 5%. Uh, we've got 1096 max stamina for the 4-piece. If it's a perfected uh, version, you've got the extra 5-piece of 1206 max health. And then the reason why this set is so good, obviously the very, very easy, simple, effortless group buff of Minor Courage. So when you taunt an enemy, you give yourself and 11 group members Minor Courage for 15 seconds, increasing their weapon and spell damage by 215. And it's able to happen every 8 seconds. So an easy 100% uptime. The next gear set, Powerful Assault, this is another option. So, Yolnokrin is somewhere around 2-3% to DPS increase. Powerful Assault is somewhere more like 5%. So, another really good buff by using Powerful Assault. Uh, we get max health, max stamina. We get weapon damage, which is the only kind of bad thing about it, potentially. Like, it's not really super useful. Uh, the 5 piece, though, this particular set now, Powerful Assault has been fixed. It works really, really well. But it didn't really affect people negatively in a four-man group anyway. But here we go. So when you cast an assault ability while in combat. So that is a big change. You cannot pre-cast this before you start a fight now. You have to be in combat. Uh, you and up to five group members within 10 meters gain 307 weapon and spell damage for 10 seconds. So another huge buff. Obviously, Yonokrin provides minor courage, which is 215. Uh, weapon and spell damage, powerful assault is 307. So it is kind of... A bit better than Yolnokrin. Obviously Yolnokrin's heavy armor and easier to use. Powerful Assault is medium armor. Less easy to use. But you are able to get a lot more benefits from that. The next gear set. Vestment of Olorim. So this is kind of a nice set. Because it gives magic a recovery. It really is a good set. Because it gives a sustain. You only need this if you don't have a healer in your group though. So if you're in a 1 tank 3 damage dealer group. Then this is going to be an option for you. Uh, so for the two piece we get magical recovery, three piece we get minor aegis, four piece more magical recovery. On the five piece, casting abilities that leave an effect on the ground in combat will create a circle of might for five seconds. You and your group members in the circle gain major courage for 20 seconds, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 430 for 20 seconds, and this effect can occur once every 10 seconds. So again, a 100% uptime capability. It gives you a lot of weapon and spell damage, especially if you're combining it with Powerful Assault, combining it with Yolnokrin. You're really able to stack it super, super high. Uh, so this is a great set, but like I say, it's light armor. You're going to have to wear it weapons and jewelry, and it's not useful if you have a healer in group. The final gear set is War Machine. This is not absolutely essential. It's more of a case of if you're looking for a burn on a boss fight, you might consider using War Machine. If your group's able to burn a boss down within a couple of seconds by casting all your ultimates and dropping um, War Machine down, then that's going to be 
something that you could do, but typically you wouldn't use this throughout a full dungeon, I wouldn't say, because it doesn't have, like Olorim is 100% uptime, PA, 100% uptime, Yolnukrin, 100% uptime, Drake's Rush, pretty close to a max uptime as well. War Machine does not have that option, because it's going to be based on you casting your ultimate, you're not able to cast them on cooldown. Yeah, it's an option if you're able to burn bosses, if you want the option of burning bosses faster. Uh, for the two items, we get max stamina, three items... Minus Slayer, 4 items, weapon damage, and then for the 5 items, when you use an ultimate ability while in combat, you and the closest 5 group members within 28 meters, gain Major Slayer for 1 second, per 10 ultimate spent, increasing your damage done to Dungeon Trial and Arena Monsters by 10%. So it is a good buff, but you're going to need to cast your ultimate, and you're going to need to uh, give out that buff for as long as possible. Obviously we're going to be using a Horn or a Colossus if you're a Necro, but this is more for trying to burn bosses, and it does require really, really high DPS to make this work efficiently and make it better than other gear sets. So in terms of monster sets, we've got Encratis again. Now Encratis is still a good monster set. Um, if you're using Yolnukrin, then you'd compare it with Encratis in a Magicka group. So this is a Magicka group monster set. It gives us max Magicka. Uh, dealing flame damage to the enemy grants Behemoth's aura for 12 seconds. Um, and it increases the flame damage that the enemies take when they're inside the aura by 5%. This equates to around about 500 to 1k DPS per damage dealer. So it's the only monster that provides a damage buff. It's not a huge buff, but it is a buff. Um, if you've got a, a magic a Dragon Knight in your group, it's going to be about a 3k DPS increase. So it is a nice monster set to use for magic groups to buff their damage. The next monster set is Engine Guardian. If you are struggling for sustain, Engine Guardian is the one that you take. You use this to improve your sustain in dungeons. So if you're newer, but you're trying to run an optimized setup, rather than giving up one of your five-piece gear sets, use Engine Guardian instead, um, and just go with a selfish monster if you have to, if you struggle. Magma Incarnate. So this is nice. We get Magic Recovery and Stamina Recovery. Obviously, the Stamina Recovery is not extremely useful, but it's, uh, it's there anyway. For the two-piece items, this is a new monster set for this patch. So when you heal yourself or a group member within a, with a single target heal ability, grant the lowest health group member within 28 meters minor courage and minor resolve, increasing their weapon and spell damage by 215 and their armor by 2974 for 10 seconds. Daedric energy will then bounce to a nearby group member within 8 meters up to 3 times, applying minor courage and minor resolve for 10 seconds. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. So this is basically the same buff as Yolnukrin. So you would never pair Magma with Yolnukrin because they both provide the same thing. However, it does give us a bit more, like a few more options now in terms of how we can set up and what sort of buffs we can provide to our group. The next gear, the next monster set is Symphony of Blades. Now, this is essentially a DPS increase. So if your group members ever have to heavy attack to get resources back during combat, then this is a good monster set to use because the less heavy attacks your group has to do, the more DPS they're going to do from casting the regular abilities and light attacks. So, although this is a sustain monster set for your group, you're not going to benefit from the sustain yourself, which is kind of unfortunate. However, your group is going to get a benefit from sustain. If your group needs sustain, first point of call is to slot this over something like Encratis, because Encratis' damage buff is so small anyway, they could probably gain more of a DPS increase by using Symphony of Blades if they're heavy attacking regularly throughout a fight. So, Symphony of Blades is good if you don't have a healer, or if you've got a situation where you're trying to increase DPS via sustain, then Symphony of Blades is the way to go. Tremor Scale um, is for stamina groups, so obviously we've got Crimson Oath, which is a gear set that you can use in stamina groups. Tremor Scale is a monster set that you can also use in stamina groups. If you're in a Magicka-based dungeon group, then don't use it. It's not going to do anything. Um, we've got, when you taunt an enemy, so again it combines up with a taunt, it, you practice monster set and it will reduce the physical resistance by 2, 3, 9, 5, so stamina, damage deals are going to do more damage, they're going to be able to get close to that pen cap, um, and this effect can occur once every 8 seconds, and it lasts for 8 seconds, procs off your taunt, nice and easy. So when you've chosen your two main sets and your monster set, you've then got the option of running a mythic item, because most of these sets, actually, all of these sets are one bar setups, so Yolnukrim, PA, Olorim, Drakes, War Machine, and Crimson Oath are all possible to run on one bar. So you have to pick two of those gear sets, combine them, depending on 
depending on your situation. Choose a monster set, depending on your situation. Then you can pick up a mythic or a weapon set. So the first weapon set that we've got here is the master weapons, the puncturing remedy set. So the perfected version, you, didn't, you don't have to have this in perfected, but if you have the perfected version, you get 2% healing taken. And then for the main piece, when you deal damage with puncture, so you taunt, you heal for 5, 6, 7, 7 health, and you gain physical and spell resistance equals the amount of healing or overhealing done for 5 seconds. It scales off max health, so the more max health you've got, the bigger the heal. Other healing buffs will increase this, so if you cast Igneous Shield before you then hit Puncture, this is going to improve the amount of healing that this particular set does. So this is a really nice one if you're trying to boost your healing. This is why I said before, you can use Leeching, but you don't need it. If you're using um, like Engine Guardian and Masters, you would get enough healing and, and sustain from that to, to justify not needing to use something like Leeching. So it's a good set to have because it will help with healing. If you're going into dungeons, you don't have a healer. If you're going into dungeons, the healing's maybe not very good. Then using this is going to be a really, really good option. Obviously, it's not a huge heal. It's almost a 6k heal. In combat, it's going to be higher than 5677. If we just cast Igneous Shield. It's already gone to 6567. So it has jumped up quite a considerable amount. So when you've got your various healing buffs active, you are going to be able to benefit from a much bigger heal from this set. The next set is a really important one. This is especially important for classes that don't really have the option of a Magicka chaining skill. So pretty much every class apart from the Dragon Knight and the Warden. This is still useful on Dragon Knights and Wardens, but I personally don't use it on a Dragon Knight because I find Chains and Talons to be really, really good. Now, if you've got the perfected version, you're going to get extra max health, but again, you don't need it to be perfected. And then if you've got... Um, you have to slot Power Bash, which is a little bit frustrating because it takes a skill slot. The problem with this gear set, for me personally, is the fact that it's got a 12 meter radius, which is often not quite big enough, and it won't chain everything in. So when it chains everything in, um, there's usually some enemies can be missed, and then you've got to wait for the cooldown to end until you can chain those in, or you're just not able to chain them in. So it can have... There are some times when this gear set isn't the best, but it definitely helps. Like if you're on a Templar tank, for example, you've got quite a few stamina skills on a Templar tank, which makes it quite difficult to be spamming Silver Leash to chain everything in. So you can just use the Vatishran uh, One Hand and Shield, the Void Bash set, you can just use that to pull everything in really quickly. Now, one of the other problems with this set is when you chain an enemy with Unrelenting Grip, that taunts the enemy for two seconds. The Fiery Grip taunt is procced when you do that. So enemies are physically taunted with Silver Leash. They're physically taunted with Unrelenting Grip. When you chain enemies in with the Void Bash set, they are not taunted. They are not aggroed. They are like just chained in, and then they will run away. So you have to have a Root skill ready to go. A Talon's ready to go. As soon as you've pulled those enemies in, you need to Talon them in place because they are going to run away. So that is something to consider when using this set is it doesn't work the same as a chain because chains will actually taunt an enemy for two seconds. So that is something you need to think about. But it is a decent set, especially if you're new to dungeons you want to be able to chain things in quicker. Learning to chain and, and root and crowd control enemies is quite a challenge for newer tanks. So this is definitely a good set for learning to tank, learning to pull enemies in, learning how to crowd control. So when you deal damage with Power Bash, you apply Call of the Void to yourself for 2 seconds. Enemies within 12 meters are immediately pulled to you. After the Call of the Void ends, you apply Major Maim to enemies in the area for 10 seconds, reducing their damage done by 10%. This effect can occur once every 13 seconds. So once you've proc this, you've then got to wait 13 seconds until you can use it again, in which point most enemies are already dead. So, yeah, it, it can be frustrating because you need to slot... Um, you need to slot Power Bash, but then you also still need to slot a chain in case there's enemies that are missed. You need to also slot um, a root skill. So you're having to use three skills to do the same job as two skills. However, this is slightly better for sustain, especially for those classes using Silver Leash. So that's one to think about. Your other option, um, which is a, an option that I really, really like, is using a one-piece training. So if you look at the one-piece, you've got one... Four, five, four max health. That is a really nice benefit. Uh, like even more max health. We combine this with a mythic item. So the Death Dealer's mythic 
Uh, ring is really, really nice. Um, this... Gain a persistent stack of Escalating Fate. Every two seconds you are in combat, up to 30 stacks max. Each stack increases your max stamina, health, and magicka by 88. You lose a stack every four seconds you are out of combat. This is a really nice mythic item, let me just say. It is absolutely fantastic for adding even more max stats. So the reason why I like it is if you're speeding through dungeons really fast, so if you don't stop at every boss, you don't stop at every ample, you're just going through and you're running and you're running and you're going into every fight straight away, this is absolutely awesome. The reason why is because it's just layering more max stats. If you don't need a weapon set like the Masters or the Vatashran um, sets, then this is the next option. Because all of your gear sets are one bar gear sets. You've got your monster set, and then you might as well fill that gap with something useful. This is going to give you a huge stat increase, which means when you're running into those ampoules, you've got more magicka, you've got more stamina, you've got more max health. For me, I love having really, really huge amounts of stats, because it means that I can do more skill casts without running out of the resources that I need to do so. It means that I can block for longer if I need to while I'm doing something. It means I can... Stay alive for longer without healing myself when I'm trying to deal with enemies and chain them in. It's just really, really helpful for giving those extra max stats. So this is something that you need to look at getting. It's a bit of a pain to get compared to all the other gear sets. But if you can get hold of this, then it's definitely a fantastic option for setting up as a dungeon tank. So I've got a few different like optimized gear setups that I want to share with you that I'm thinking of using for this particular patch. Um, just a quick thing that I'm using. So all of my gear is full sturdy. It's a full sturdy setup. I'm using infused crusher weapon on the back bar. I'm using infused prismatic glyph on the front bar. And I'm using triune magic recovery on my jewelry. That is the setup I've got for everything. That is my favorite setup for doing dungeon content. It's my favorite setup for anything where I'm pretty much the main tank. It's just really, really nice. And I love to be having those huge stats. So that's why I set, set it up in that way where I've got Triune and Tristat. If you're not able to get that, then Infused Magicka Recovery is another good option. Having Stamina and Magicka Enchants with all your points, all your attributes into max health also can work. But if you want to really maximize this particular build, then you will want to use Triune and Tristat. Okay, so option number one. Uh, I've gone with a Vatishran One Hand and Shield on the front bar. On the back bar, I've got Olorim. So as I say, this is a build that you'd go with with no healer we've then got magma incarnate and this is going to give us the minor courage so we've got olorim for the major courage we've got magma for the minor courage and then we're using powerful assault on the body on the jewelry we've got olorim as well so we've back barred olorim obviously for the uh the one hand you could use masters as well but this is kind of just one option of many that you could use so these are the stats while I'm using 5 medium. So I'm using a 5 medium setup. I've still got almost 22k magicka, almost 40k health, and 25.7k stamina. 1.7k magicka recovery. My resistance is a low. Don't worry about that. Um, the thing that we're looking at here is the block mitigation. We've got 69% block mitigation. However... We have got the Bracing Anchor Champion Points. Uh, our CP means that we don't need to actually go any higher on resistances. So we've got low resistances. However, we're going to have 20% more block mitigation with Bracing Anchor. We're also going to have 10% damage reduction with Wardmaster. Now, the reason I'm using Wardmaster on the Dragonite is because we're going to use a lot of Igneous Shields with this particular build. So we're going to benefit from 10% damage reduction quite a lot of the time. So what this means is, in combat, we're going to take very little damage because of those. So we don't need to worry about um, we don't need to worry about having really really high resistances because we've got bracing anchor. Now bracing anchor means that when we're in combat, we need to add 20% more block mitigation. So we're going to be at basically 90% block mitigation. So we're going to reduce all enemy damage by 90%. That is without even considering resistances or minor maim from heroic slash there's like with nothing else on the table we're going to be reducing damage by a huge amount already we're going to be taking a lot less damage already 
So we don't need to worry about resistances in this situation. So running a medium armor setup is going to be possible now more than ever. If you've struggled in the past to run one or you weren't comfortable running one, now you're going to have no problem. And I'll quickly show you the damage that you're going to take by doing this. So I'm just going to quickly show you a fight with medium armor. Okay, so I just wanted to show you quickly um, the amount of damage that we're going to take. This is a medium armor build. So I'm just going to quickly show you the amount of damage that you're actually going to receive while using the medium armor setup. So here comes the hit. We're in medium, like I say, we're in medium armor. We've got no buffs active. 7,223. So this is why medium armor setup for dungeon, uh, a dungeon setup is, is going to be good for this patch. Because as you can see, basically taking no damage. So this is thanks to our CP. If we also cast Igneous Shield, the damage is going to be even lower. So, as you can see, it's going to be more than possible to run this particular setup for dungeon content. Now, as you just saw there, this is a medium armor setup. This is on VET. And I just stood inside the breath. And this boss didn't kill me. Like, that is inside the breath. Which absolutely destroys tanks usually if they stand inside it. We're able to just tank it and not even worry about it. Look at this. In a medium armor setup. Absolutely crazy. So, there you go. That is... That is why medium armor is acceptable for this particular build for dungeons. Okay, so there you saw that. Um, that was the exact reason why you can run this particular setup. Um, don't forget, you can also, like, if you wanted to, you could just drop the Vatishran one-handed shield. You can one-bar PA. PA is one-bar. So you could front-bar PA, back-bar Olorim, and then use uh, Death Dealers and the one trainee piece on this build as well. It works. Every, every single piece of gear works with each other in some way or another depending on how you set this up. Now, the biggest issue you've got with this particular setup is the bar space. So to proc magma, you need a, a single target heal, which means you can't use vigor to proc PA to be able to get this. You need to do a single target heal. Now, the best way to obviously do that is to proc it on yourself. And you proc it on yourself, that'll then make then that'll make the minor courage bounce to the other enemies within um, the radius so it needs to be within 8 meters, and then this will bounce between people in your group to give them that as well. So it does require quite a lot of effort. So for some people, using Yolnaquin will still be a much better option. But in terms of this particular monster set, it is a replacement. And when you consider you stack in Powerful Assault, Major and Minor um, Courage, you're giving your group an absolutely huge amount of increased weapon and spell damage. You're looking at about a 12% DPS increase with this particular gear setup, which is just absolutely insane. In terms of the skills you'd need to use for this, you are having to give up a root skill potentially, um, or a chain skill. So, so on the Dragon Knight for this, I'd obviously use Pierce Armor, Heroic Slash, Igneous Shield, Green Dragon Blood, Power Slam to proc the Vatishram one hand and Shield. If you don't use the Vatishram one hand and Shield, this makes it better, because then you can use something else in this slot. Front Bar Ultimate Replenishing Barrier for the Magicka Recovery. On the Back Bar... In a rage for your range taunt, caltrops to proc PA, blockade of frost, balance for sustain, unrelenting grit to chain in the stragglers. You could switch this out for choking talons though, if you're finding that to be the better option, and then aggressive horn for your main ultimate. Setup number two. This is my setup that you might use if you've got a healer in group. So if you're in a dungeon group with a healer, there is nothing wrong with that. Um, it's kind of frowned upon people. Some some people frown upon the idea of having a healer in a group, but I don't see anything wrong with it. Me personally, I run in a dungeon group on the NA server. I have a healer in my group. I don't mind having a healer in the group. I It makes my life easier. It makes the group's life a little bit easier. We've got really high damage, even with a healer. We were hitting over 200k DPS on some fights in the new dungeon. Um, so it's uh, for me, it's not an issue. It really just depends on... The people that you know, the people that you group up with, what roles they play, what they're comfortable with, and how you want to set up. I like setting up with a healer most of the time. 
I can appreciate how good it is to run with the 3DD setup because the damage is just absolutely unbelievable. But at the same time, you do have extra utilities by having the healer in group. So when we switch to this setup now, the second setup that, I, that I've got here, we've got Powerful Assault front bar. We've got Drake's Rush on the back bar. I've then got Magma. We've got some Drake's body pieces. We've got a one-piece trainee in there on the waist. Uh, we've got a 5-1-1 setup as well. And then we're using Death Dealers. So here's my stats with the Death Dealers at, at its max stacks. Um, 24,558 Magicka, 47,393 health, 29,708 max stamina. Absolutely fantastic amounts of resources. Now, if you combine something like Drake's Rush, Yolnacrin, um, Magma, Death Dealers, you're looking at something like 35k max stamina. When I've used that setup on the PTS, it's just unreal. So... Yeah, if, if you have issues with Stamina Sustain and you want to stack that Stamina Sustain a bit higher, you can get it over 35k this patch, even with 45k max health. Even with 25k Magicka, you can adjust your health stat a little bit more, reduce your health a little bit. You don't need 50k health. You can complete dungeons without 47k max health. You could drop that down to 40, put all your points into Stamina and Magicka. You'd have huge, huge Stamina pools, Magicka pools, and still have 40k health. So there's so many ways you can customize the gear in this build to work in a better way for yourself. So you've really just got to think about how you want to set up and what's going to be most benefit to you. So again, the skills for this setup, that on this particular build now, Pierce Armour, we've got Echo Invigor to proc PA on the front bar. You could use Razor Caltrops as well if you wanted to. Uh, Igneous Shield. Green Dragon Blood because we need a single target heal to proc Magma. Engulfing Flames because we've got that extra slot now. We're not using the Void Bash set so we don't need to use that particular skill. We can use Heroic Slash instead if we wanted to. But yeah, Ringulfing Flames is a nice buff if you're in a Magicka group um, and you're trying to cover all, all bases. Uh, then you've got Replenishing Barrier again on the back bar. This is my standard kind of back bar setup, usually in a Rage, Choking Talons, Blockade of Frost, Balance and Unrelenting Grip. The reason I run these all on the back bar is because when I go into an ad pull, I like to have um, chains and balance next to each other so I can spam chains and then if I run out of magic I can just cast balance and I can root the enemies in place as well so when I chain enemies in I like to chain then root chain then root and then balance to get my resources back and then I can kind of go through all that um, so that is kind of how I like to do my ad pulls there's so many different ways you can set up and so many different skills you can use obviously you could use stagger if you really kind of want to push damage even further so the main thing with this is just to set up in the best way possible for you. Choose a gear set. Yolnacrin, PA, Olorim, Drake's Rush are the main four sets. If you've got the damage to burn bosses, War Machine. If you're in a stamina group, Crimson Oath. Choose two of those gear sets and they all equate to around about the same DPS increase for your group. Then you want to choose a monster set. You've got a choice of Encratis for Magicka groups, Tremor Scale for stamina groups, Magma Incarnate if you're not using Yolnacrin, Symphony of Blades if your group needs Sustain, and Engine Guardian if you need Sustain. Once you've picked a monster set, you then pick another piece of gear. You pick a weapon set if you need one, Void Bash set if you need to help with chain enemies in, Puncture and Remedy if you need more healing, or the Death Dealers, and one trainee if you want more huge max stats. Okay, if you are playing this build on a different class, so obviously this is a Dragon Knight. Dragon Knights are, in my opinion, the most superior class for dungeon content purely because of chains, talons, engulfing flames, igneous shield, and, thing, and, and the ability to get resources back by casting their ultimate. Those are the reasons why the Dragon Knight is the most superior, in my opinion. However, that doesn't mean you can't use other classes. Other classes are very, very good still. So if we're in a situation where... We're using a Necro Tank. The main thing is you use the same kind of skills and just replace it depending on the class. So the Necro Tank is going to use Scythe instead of Dragon Blood um, and things like that. But Necro skills, obviously you'd still use Pierce Armor, Heroic Slash. You might want to swing in some Unnerving Boneyard. Hungry Scythe for your healing skill. And Necrotic Potency is a huge, huge skill that you want to use on a Necro Tank for dungeon content. You've then got Empowering Grasp. 
which you want to use on a necro tank as well. That's going to immobilize enemies. Immobilizations are better than fears. So you could use Agony Totem, but it's not going to be as good as Empowering Grasp because Empowering Grasp is a group buff. It gives empower to your group, but also it will immobilize enemies, which is more superior, especially when you're chaining enemies. Um, you can use Bone Armor, but you do want to kind of use Balance, in my opinion, because Balance is a great sustain tool. Um, if you are using Balance, then obviously use Silver Leash. If you're using Bone Armor, Bone Armor is a bit better on the sustain in terms of the stamina sustain because Silver Leash is really expensive. But if you're sitting there on 35k stamina, it really shouldn't be that big of a deal. Then you want to use a Colossus. Um, I kind of like Glacial Colossus personally because I like that it stuns the enemies. I actually like the fact that it stuns enemies within dungeon content because it means you don't have to use an immobilization then. If you've chained enemies in and drop a Colossus, it's going to be useful because it's going to stun them and, and mean that you cast one less skill. If you want a Nightblade tank, um, again, Pierce Armor, Heroic Slash, Swallowed Soul. Um, the reason I use that is for the ulti gain. There isn't really many other super useful skills to use in its place, but that is a flex spot. You can switch that out and use something else if you want to. But having a little bit extra healing, having that ulti gain is nice to have. We've then got Dark Cloak. That's your main heal and provides you a lot of uh, damage reduction buffs. So I prefer Phantasm Escape over Mirage just because of the Snare and Immobilization Immunity, which is really useful for quite a lot of dungeons. On the back bar, you'd go with Inner Rage, Mass Hysteria, which is the only really useful crowd control skill for a Nightblade. So that is your only option, really. Uh, you then got, obviously, Blockade, Legion Strikes, because you're going to need the sustain. Um, you've already got Major Resolve from casting Dark Cloak and part of your passive, so you don't need Balance, but you will need Stamina Sustain. So Legion Strikes is very important for this build. And then Silver Leash uh, for your Pulse skill. It's a good idea to use the Vatishran one hand and shield on the Nightblade. So maybe you'd switch out Swallowed Soul for your Void Bash for that particular skill. Main ultimate, obviously, Aggressive Horn again. As we move on to the Sorcerer, the Sorcerer is kind of quite simple to set up because there's not really much space for movement in terms of your skills. So you've got Pierce Armor, Heroic Slash, Dark Deal, which is going to provide you group buff of Minor Prophecy. And it's also a great sustain tool because it gives you... Um, it costs Magicka and it gives you a heal plus stamina and stamina over time. So really nice. You've then got Clan Fear, which is your main heal. Huge heal. Really, really good heal. But this is a skill that you've got to slot on two bars, which really diminishes your ability to switch and change skills around. Silver Leash, which we have to slot on the front bar just purely because there is no space because we're having to double slot a healing skill. Then you've got your, your barrier front bar for your Magicka recovery. You've got Inner Rage on the back bar. Restraining Prison, which is your immobilization. Again, we are having to use an immobilization skill. This is not as good as Talons because it's only in front of you, but it will be the only skill that's worth using in terms of rooting the enemy because it's an immobilization. It also gives Major Vitality, which makes boss fights really easy because you can cast this at a boss. And then you've got increased healing received. So that really helps in high damage environments. Then we've got Elemental Blockade. Uh, Clan Fear again, and then Balance for your Major Resolve and your Magicka Sustain. Obviously, if you need to switch something out, you're probably going to have to drop Heroic Slash to put in something like Void Bash if you need to do that. The Templar Tank. Templar Tanks are quite a good option for dungeons now, thanks to their Living Dark skill. Um, but the main skill bar, the ad, like the generic skill bar, Pierce Armor, Heroic Slash, Silver Leash, this is definitely an option that you'd want to use Void Bash on. So you'd want to drop Silver Leash and use... Um, the Void Bash set instead. Repentance is absolutely ideal for dungeon content. It gives, um, it gives obviously, sustain via being slotted, so you get um, extra recovery while it's slotted. But when you kill enemies, it will give you stamina and health back. So it gives health to you and allies, and it gives you stamina back. So this is the easiest way. So if you don't want to use the Void Bash set, you will definitely need to use Repentance because then when you're chaining enemies in, so when you chain an enemy in with Silver Leash, um, as soon as an enemy dies, you use Repentance and you're able to get the stamina back to cast another Silver Leash. So it's a huge benefit to you and a great way to sustain. The next skill is Living Dark. This is kind of one of, one of three healing skills, but it's one of your main heals because when you run into an ad pull, you make sure this is active. It lasts for six seconds every half a second it'll heal you for around 3k health so you run into an ad pull with living dark active it gives you group the minor sorcery group buff 
So if it's a Magicka group that you're in, that's perfect. But then you're also going to get this huge uh, healing skill that's going to activate based on when enemies hit you. And it also debuffs enemies and things like that. It snares enemies. So it can be really helpful for that. Uh, barrier for your Magicka recovery again. In a Rage for your Range Taunt. Turn Evil is your crowd control skill. This is what starts to make the Templar not very good. We've got Turn Evil, really expensive stamina skill to crowd control enemies. You've got Silver Leash, really expensive stamina chain skill. So we're already struggling for sustain on this particular setup because of those skills. You can use Time Stop instead, but it's extremely expensive to use and it's got a delay effect on it where it doesn't instantly stun or control the enemies. Any enemy that has been chained in with Silver Leash also cannot be feared with Turn Evil, cannot be stunned with Time Stop. So it is a bit of a problem for the Templar tank. Crowd Control is their biggest weakness, and so that's what makes them less effective for dungeon content. Uh, then you've got Elemental Blockade, you've got Restoring Focus, which is a fantastic skill. This gives you Major Resolve, it gives you Resistances, it gives you Stamina every second, 242 Stamina every one second. You don't have to be stood inside the Aura to get that. If you want the healing from this skill, you do need to be sort of inside it. So this is a health-based healing skill, a tank-based healing skill. So it, it scales off max health. It's going to be really, really good. So you stand in, you on a boss fight, you cast this on the ground, you stand inside it. It's going to give you a huge amount of healing, especially if you combine it with Living Dark. If you've got Living Dark active, you've got Restoring Focus active, and then the final skill, Extended Ritual. Extended Ritual is a really nice skill for group content because it's going to give a purge for everybody. Everyone's going to be able to cleanse harmful effects from themselves by you using this skill. So even though it's a bit overkill with the three healing skills potentially, it is really useful the fact that it's providing a group based purge. And that is the main reason why you use Extended Ritual. When you combine Living Dark, Extended Ritual and Restoring Focus all together, the self healing you get from that is equivalent to about 10k per second on the Templar tank. So in the past, the Templar really suffered from its lack of self-healing on a tank. And now that is definitely not the case because you've got lots and lots of healing skills. And Repentance is also another heal on top of that. So you've got lots of healing. That is not a problem now. The main issue is crowd control. For the Warden tank, Pierce Armor, Heroic Slash, Enchanted Growth. It's going to provide um, minor intellect and endurance to your group, increasing their magic and stamina recovery and to yourself as well. Um, this also procs minor toughness your group buff so that is the reason why you would use this skill you've then got polar wind which is your main heal and it heal heals another person in your group so that is a really good way especially in a 3dd setup you're able to give them more sustain you're able to heal them with enchanted growth you give them more health you're then able to heal them with polar wind and then you also buff them up with expansive frost cloak in a minute that we'll get to that's going to give major resolve as well so wardens are actually really really good for dungeon content because they are kind of similar to the DK, but they provide more survivability and they are actually in a 3DD composition. They are really good because you can help with self-heals if you need to. You've got Fetcher Infection in there, which is going to apply Minor Vulnerability. Barrier for your Magic Recovery. Inner Rage for your Range Taunt. Gripping Shards is really nice. It's very similar to Choking Talons. So it's got a 360 degree radius. It immobilizes enemies. Um, and it's got a higher chance to apply this chilled effect. So, especially because it's on your back bar, you have to have this on your back bar because you're going to be using a frost staff. If you've got a frost staff and using the gripping shards on the same bar, you've got a chance to proc minor brittle, which is another group DPS increase. You're not really going to focus on minor brittle with this particular set because it's just too difficult to achieve without losing in other areas. Elemental blockade, expansive frost cloak for that major resolve for your group, like I said before. And then Frozen Device. Now, Frozen Device can be tricky to use. You might have to switch this out for um, Silver Leash or the Vatashram One-Handed Shield. But Frozen Device is, is kind of better on in situations where you know where the enemy already is and you can pre-lay it. When you've got to try and throw it on top of the enemy that's moving, it's kind of difficult to target. But with practice, it is a better option. And it's a Magicka-based pull. It's the only other one, apart from Unrelenting Grip, that will pull enemies to you with a Magicka-based effect. So... It is good, it is worth practicing and getting used to using Frozen Device, and that makes the Warden really, really good. And then obviously again, you've got your Aggressive Horn. For crowd control on some classes, you might prefer to just go with a, a Snare. So as I said before, Razor Caltrops um, is, is a good option. If you don't have an Immobilization skill, like on the Templar tank, 
and you don't want to use a really expensive skill like turn evil, you can just go ahead and use something like Caltrops, which is going to snare the enemy, and kind of, it's not going to root them in place, but it's going to keep them there for longer in that area, because they are going to be super slowed down. Don't forget that, obviously, if you're using Powerful Assault, you've got to use a skill that is going to uh, proc it, so you've got to use an, an Assault skill. If you're using Olorim, you need to use a skill that's going to place a ground effect, your blockade will do that, but obviously if you're going to use blockade, you need to remember to target it near to your group so they actually get it. If you're using Drake's Rush, you need to remember to bash the enemy. Crimson Oath, you just need to cast a buff skill so Igneous Shield would work. And then with Yolnacrin, Yolnacrin obviously is a great option because you just taunt the enemy. If we quickly go on to the champion points now, so obviously green champion points are completely up to you if you want some battle useful things. Rationer, Liquid Efficiency and Steed's Blessing are your best ones. It's kind of good to have things like Breakfall as well, reducing fall damage, because there are certain mechanics in certain areas where you will take fall damage, so that's not a bad option to have that available. For your blue champion points, uh, the main slotables here are going to be Duelist Rebuff, Enduring Resolve, Unassailable, and Ironclad. You also want to take Hardy, Preparation, Elemental Aegis, Another thing that you could slot, if you don't need one, if there's one slotable that you can remove, if you're in a 3DD setup, then you might consider using Enlivening Overflow. Especially in our, our particular setup, we're going to be at around 25k uh, max magicka, so we're going to get around, uh, well, it's going to be over 100 extra recovery for your group. Um, it's a 50% uptime, so it might, be, it might be worth slotting that if you don't have a healer in your group. You can get some use out of that if there's something else that you, you don't need. Obviously, just take everything that's got um, that's not that's not needed to be slotted, like Tireless Discipline, Eldritch Insight, Precision. Um, you would want to take these particular passives, like War Mage and Flawless Ritual. Eventually, Battle Mastery. Those are going to provide some higher up times on status effects if you need them. So for your Red CP, I've gone with Boundless Vitality, but you can remove this if you don't need that extra max health. But I kind of like to have that and then adjust my attributes in other ways to get more max stamina and magicka. Fortified for the extra armor. This isn't, again, it's not absolutely essential. You can remove this if you want, especially with the other CP we're going to look at now. I have dropped Rejuvenation from my build because 90 extra recovery is not really worth it. It's not really worth having that. You would be better off having some other options. So you could use Slippery if you want. That's that's a nice option. It will break free for no cost um, automatically when you get a disabling effect. You've got Expert Evasion, which really helps sustain if you dodge roll. Getting a free dodge roll every 30 seconds helps a surprising amount, especially if you're in heavy armor. Another option, especially for DKs and Templars, Shield Master reduces the cost of your damage shields. So if you cast in Igneous Shield, that's going to be really nice. And you can also combine this with another slotable in a second. Um, our other slotable is going to be Ward Master on the DK. So we're going to reduce damage taken while blocking. Um, and you've got a shield active, so when you cast Igneous Shield and you're blocking, you're going to take 10% less damage. Absolutely unreal. Bracing Anchor. This is what means, this is what helps us tank in medium armor. We take no damage whilst wearing medium armor, thanks to this particular passive, because 20% block mitigation while we're in combat, while we're blocking. You have to be really careful with this champion point, because it makes you seem invincible. You take such small amounts of damage while blocking. As soon as you drop block, though, you're taking a huge amount of damage because you're not wearing heavy armor. You've not got the resistances. So you do have to be really careful with how you play a build with medium armor, with low resistances, while using the Bracing Anchor CP because it makes you seem like you're much stronger than you are because as soon as you drop that block, the amount of incoming damage is huge. So that is the dungeon tag build for the Waking Flame patch. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below or on the Tank Club Discord. If you'd like to support the Tank Club, please feel free to sub to us on YouTube, on Twitch, or on Patreon. All support is greatly appreciated and helps us keep that content coming. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.